All right, hi everybody. I'm gonna continue from where I left off last time, which was getting Firebase to work. And uh, we got the basic, uh, what the uh, hosting system working. So we're, we're hosting a simple application in the uh, public web server. And uh, today what I wanna do is uh, figure out how to get um, authentication working. So, Let's see, and I'm practicing this thing. I'm gonna share my desktop. And there we go. And there we go. So I'm gonna continue with this, and I don't need a video, so I'm gonna take that off. And how do I do that? Kill the video, there we go. But I'm screen sharing, so I'm good with that. All right, here we go. So uh, let's see. We're in this folder. And um, once again, we're, uh, we go into this, um, what this is, this is a Firebase project. And Firebase projects are comprised of uh, multiple apps. And I have a single app defined for, um, I call it a web app. You can also have an iOS app, and an Android, Android app. I think you can have a Unity app too. I think there's a fourth app type. I think there's four app types. I've got to check on that. But anyway, the, the, the web app requires this public folder. And if I see into the public folder, this is what the web server is going to uh, render. And um, right now, I'm going to open up a new window. And just to uh, remind everybody to, uh, if we want to see the app running locally, then uh, we got to run the emulator. And we're going to do that. It's uh, Firebase serve that starts the emulator. And then we could test. Yeah, there we go. This is the, the URL for the local uh, locally running emulator. Go ahead and go into there. It says hi. That's all we're doing. In this public folder, index.html. This is what we have set up so far. Where does it say hi? It says hi right here. So we do that by uh, you know, inserting the text hi into this div. We use this ID. Well, actually, I forgot to uh, finish something last time I was going to mention. Um, just a style that I learned to develop just to make things uh, a little simpler. And a student of mine last year, last time I taught this course, pointed out that these IDs result in globally accessible uh, identifiers. So I can, I can access these, this div element through the global namespace uh, just by using this MSG here. So I can do, instead of using this document dot get element by ID MSG dot enter HTML, I could ins instead just type MSG dot enter HTML. And that's good enough. And let's, uh, let's just make sure that we're, we're getting that. So we're gonna do buy on there. And let's see if that works. Now, if I reload, it may still say hi because I don't know whether it's going to render out of the cache or whether it's going to uh, reload the page um, completely. Let's check it out. So it does say buy. So it did, it did, uh, it did uh, reload the page completely. And remember, I told you about this disable cache business here. And um, I wonder if I turn that off, I'm gonna do an experiment. I'll turn off that disable cache. Let's go in here and we'll call that um, high again. Let's see if that works. All right, I'm gonna reload that thing and it doesn't matter if it's disabled or not, but watch this. I'm gonna take this here Maybe we'll do something like, you know, go to Google, say, okay.
Now I've got the cache disabled. <laughs> now watch this. I'm going to try this. This is buy again. This should say buy again. And if I go back, if I paste this in here, let's see if it gets the document out of the cache. It says buy again. So it doesn't, in this case, it's not having any effect. And I don't have a good demonstration for you yet on that, but I'll work on it. I'm going to work on that as something that they still need to be aware of. But anyway, here, the, the point, that, the other point I was trying to getting started on was that this, this ID actually generates or results in, you know, generate, maybe that's a good word, a globally uh, visible identifier that I can use to access the HTML element. So what I do, just, just to avoid any possible naming collision, what I usually do is give this a prefix that I am confident won't, uh, will isolate my names from um, overwriting any existing names that is available through the browser's uh, JavaScript API. So here we go, I go using underscore MSG, or A underscore rather, so that's A for, could mean one of two things for me, it's either authentication or application. All right, so here we go. So let's get into the um, authentication. Like we, we have the library up here loaded. And am I recording? I am. Okay. So there's the library that's loaded. Let's go to the uh, console. How do I get to the console? Let's get to the console. So we're going to go to the Firebase console. There it is. I've got three projects and the project we're working on is the server prog. And this shows me what's going on there. We've got hosting configured. Hosting is configured. And this is the information about that. And, but we do not have authentication configured. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna, we're gonna configure some authentication. Uh, now, the authentication can be done in a, a number of different ways. And it's, it's crazy, the number of options you have here. It's really fantastic. I wanna show you uh, what I've been experimenting with. You can authenticate through all these systems. And yeah, I want to show you this uh, email password based authentication. So I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to enable that. And I'm going to enable this thing. It's called passwordless sign in. I'm going to show you how to do that. This is kind of more complicated than maybe the other approaches, but uh, this is how I want to try it. Passwordless authentication with email link requires additional configuration steps. Follow the steps for your platform. Oh, so see this? These, these three things, what they're talking about with your, your platform, they're talking about the app. So you need to do additional configuration. If, you have an, if your project includes an iOS app, you've got to look at how to configure for that. If your project includes an Android app, and you can have all three of these app types all in the same project. So you've got your applications accessible through all those different mechanisms. But we only have a web project at the moment. So I want to go into here, into the documentation, find out what more configuration we need to do. Authenticate with Firebase using email link in JavaScript. So I'm going to basically just sort of follow through this and look at the documentation. Let's take a look, see where we are in here. So this is the Firebase documentation. See the URL is up there. And um, so we're down in this section here under authentication. Look at that. So authentication is one sort of area of um, a Firebase, which, which corresponds to, you know, this, this file, this uh, file of JavaScript code. 
And um, then we have the real-time database flag trying to go all these things, but we're going to do authentication. And when you do authentication, these are the um, areas that they're looking at. Look at, they've got Unity in here, how to do authentication using a C++ program and so on. You're not restricted to this, basically. You, could, you can authenticate from a Python desktop application if you want, but you have to do it, uh, you know, using um, sockets or some kind of HTTP uh, library or something like that. So anyway, without getting into that too much more, we're concerned with the web. We have a web application and this looks interesting. I just, just for a little diversion for a moment, sign in with a pre-built UI. This is very interesting. This is something that uh, you might want to consider. You can allow, basically with this pre-built uh, uh, UI, you can drop in a very nice authentication um, system that, that allows your users to authenticate through multiple, um, what do you call it, identity providers. And uh, this is the notes on that, and it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Anyway, I've been doing a little bit of research on that, but I want to come back to this email link authentication. Now, this lets the user log into your app by receiving a link in their email. They don't have to set a password. You just receive a link in the email, they follow the link, and they're considered authenticated. Uh, let's see how that works. You can use Firebase. All right, there are numerous benefits. We'll skip that before you begin. Uh, copy the initialization snippet from Firebase console to your project, as described in here. Enable email link sign-in for your project. We did that open the console, open the auth section. We did this on the sign in method tab, pick this and this, click save. All right, we've gone through there. Now we're up to here. Send an authentication link to the user's email address to initiate the authentication flow. So they use this term a lot, flows, authentication flow. So Authentication is a, is a number of steps. They're calling those, those sequence of steps a flow. And different, you authenticate through different ways. You have different flows. And one app in a multiple ways or multiple flows. So we're looking at one flow. And present the user with an interface, prompts user provider email address. And then you call send sign in link to email. So look at that. You need to, we need to present the user with an interface that prompts the user to provide their email address. So we gotta have that. Yeah, so let's highlight that again. So this is a task that, that once we do this, come on, once we do this, we're gonna get the, we need to get the email address. Once we have the email address that the user wants to authentic, uh, authenticate with, then we have to call this method send sign in link to email. Let's go ahead, let's figure that out. Uh, so, uh, but we're gonna do, I'm gonna do this a step at a time. By the way, reading forward and getting confused, and I have done this once already, so I know how to, I have some memory of how to do this. Well, it's very, co it's complicated to me. So I need to go through this again, and basically refer to the documentation. But I know I need to have a way to collect the user's email address. I'm gonna show that to you here. So it'll look like something like this. We'll do a div. And I'm gonna have a, we're gonna to have to have a, like a text box, right? So it'll be something like an input field. That'll be input, 
the type is text. That is optional. That's the default. And I'll put it in there anyway. And uh, what else are we going to do? We're going to have to have a um, an ID. And I'm going to use my, my technique there. This is a underscore. This is email. And let's do this. So input. Let's see. I have email colon that'll come up in one line anyway. I think that's all I need. And let's see, let's see what that looks like. I'm just showing you it's going to take a while. And that's 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 my approach to things. Here's loading, there's the buy again, here's the email. And for this um, this div here, I think what I'm gonna do is do something like um, give some status. I'm gonna say not logged in. Okay. <clears throat> And this is, um, we've got the, I'm going to do this. We need a way to uh, get this email and call that function. So the function that we'll define here is, uh, what is it? Um, I'm going to call it login function login and I'm just just playing around with this we're gonna have to call the login function when they enter this email there has to be a submit there has to be a submit button here right so it'll be uh, input type equals submit and uh, value equals uh, I'm going to call it login or send 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 login link. I'll uh, do something like that. Let's see if that's. I'm not sure I need to have this opening closing thing here, but uh, I'll put it there anyway. Maybe I could do it like this. I can't remember. It's, so many things to remember. And I'll just put a little space in there. Let's see if that's good enough. Take this off. I like to keep things as simple as I can. And let's see. And this, this input. So I'm going to give this an ID as well. And let's do it like this. I'm going to do ID equals A. And this is going to be the uh, called a send send link. That's what I'm going to call it. A send link. It's the a send link button. How about that? That's the a send link button. And just to be consistent, what I want to do here is um, put the ID up in the front so it's the same as the other one. So I've got the um, just to keep a pattern going there. I've got a I've got an input element. I've got an element. I put the ID first. Here I put the ID first. There we go. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Let's see. We got uh, this is input. We can also make that a button. Let me see if I make this. Um, now I'll leave it like that. Okay, so this uh, now the login has got to get called when this thing gets clicked. So let's see how we do that. So login should get called. I'm going to do this alert login. And we need to call that when the user clicks a send link button. So to do that, I need to register 
a, an event handler on that input element. So a send link button. And we want to uh, add event listener. I could do some things from memory here. Add to event listener and the event type is going to be, I think it's click. And when that runs, I'm gonna call login. I'm gonna call the login function right up there. All right, let's see if that works. Um, uh, here, actually, I'm going to reload this thing, not logged in. There's the email, send the login link. There it is. Login. That's working. All right. So how do we get, how do we get the stuff? Right? So there's my email. And, uh, so when, when login runs, what I want to do is, uh, look at, this, um, I need the email address. I want to call it, I'm going to store the email address in a variable called email. And I'm going to make that a const. I start with const and if I need to loosen that up and set it to a let, I'll do that. So the email is taken out of that input element. So we can access the input element through that global name and uh, I think it's value doing that from memory and let's see if that works how to reload them remember to reload right I have to reload all that and uh, Bing send login link and it does not say XXX Send login link. What's going on? Send login link. I click that. It says send login link. What is going on? I want to say email, not send login link. Oh, that's the value. All right. So I got, oh, look, see, there's the value right there. So it's not value. It's something else. It's, um, what is it? It's the input. How do I get the value out of there? Uh, inner text. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got to look that one up. So let's go ahead and look that up. So it's input element. Input element. I'll say attributes. All right, the input element, here they are. Uh, nah, nah, nah. Opt out, whatever that is. Form, how do I get the value out of there? Boy, there's a lot of stuff to read here. Type, value, specifies the initial value for the control width specifies the width so this will be form method maybe i need to put it in a form is that the issue and this is how do i access this um input let's take a look at the input element so I can't remember how to do this. It should be pretty simple. Size so the name to the text. This is the size. I know it's simple, but I cannot figure it out. Let's see. This is um, type is submit. No, this is totally wrong. This should be a email, not button. I don't need the value of the button. All right, I need the value from the email uh, element.
All right, that should do it. Reload. Got it. All right. <laughs> that took a while. So let's see. So now we, we got the email. So we have a we have a function that runs here when the user types in an email into the text field and then clicks the link to send it. So now let's let's pretend when we when we get this email, let's pretend that the user logs in. Okay, let's pretend that we successfully log in. All right, so, uh, so we're gonna pretend we successfully log in. There we go. So what we're gonna do is um, change the message. to logged in. And, you know, um, I'm going to put for this input field here, this uh, value, what is it, what goes in there? This is uh, input, input, input. Let me do this. Uh, there's another, how do I put there's a way to stick send login link. This is the, oh, it's not this one. It's uh, this one here. The value here, I think if I set the value here to AAA, say, that I think that shows up over here. Let's see, is that right? There's the AAA, yeah, so just a, that's just a convenience. I'm gonna end up putting a, an email link in there. And, um, and I'll use my own email, csusbdt at gmail.com. I don't wanna have to type it in all the time, so I'm just gonna get it set up like that, okay. All right, that's just for testing, and because I don't wanna have to type my email in every time I test it. So let's see. So when we when we click this uh, login link, we're going to set the inner HTML to logged in. Let's see if that works. And there it is. Now we're logged in. Okay. So we're, but we're going to do more. We're going to do more than that. What I'm going to do is organize the web page as a single page app. And I'm going to take the. Um, I'm going to divide the web page into two sections. And the first section is going to be called, will be in this div that has an ID set to logging in. So this is a kind of like the state, sounds like the state of the application. So we're logging in and this is a, this is the logging in message. Yeah, um, put some indentation in there. And then I've got another div. And this one, this div is going to be logged in. So when we're logging in, I'm just going to render this div and then after we log in I'll re I'll render the other div it's the logged in message I could have had the 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 message outside of both of these divs I could have done it like that. I didn't have to do it in like, you know, let me do it like that just to, uh, just to keep things simple. Just to keep things simple. I'll do this. I'll say hi. Once we get logged in and um, paste that in there, this is gonna be our, kind of like our 
global message. I'll just call it message here. And this is going to be lo loading. I'm just going to call it loading. Actually, this, I'll just take that one out of there. Just go ahead and have a, have a, have a, just to keep it simple. I mean, with a real app, you might keep, uh, have separate messages in your two separate areas. So this will be loading. Once again, we'll set it to loading. Uh, when we load the web page, we have a logged in area. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to set the style of this element, the default style, to block none. I'm going to silence my phone here. And block none. This one is going to be also block none. So nothing is nothing is visible. All right, nothing is visible. The only thing that's visible is that loading message there. And so we're going to come down to here. And um, so the first thing we do, we do the inner HTML is uh, I'm going to I'm going to say loaded. It's loading, and then we're going to we're going to say loaded. There we go. So we're going to change it from loading to loaded. And let's see here. I'm going to take this. So both of these are both of these divs are invisible at this point. So this should should we should only see this one line up here. And we're going to look for look for error messages. Mm -hmm. Nothing, and everything is visible. So something didn't work. So style equals I can't remember. How do you make a block? I can't remember that. Memory is gone. So that's the uh, style attributes. To block styles. Let me try something like that. CSS. Oh, display. All right, I can remember now. It's not block, it's display. It's display. And where's the other one? Up there. Display none. So that's a CSS attribute that. I think it attaches to every element type. And that should now be non-visible. And there we go. There it is, loading, and then you see loaded. So <clears throat> in this event listener, this is like once the content is loaded and we're ready to operate on the, on the web page so we can do things in there. So here we're going to say loaded. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a logging in dot style dot display. So you know, that's, how, that's how we access this attribute from code. That's how we set the a style property in code. And we're going to set that to uh, to block. There we go. Oh, look at that. I'm trying to learn how to code without semicolons, which uh, is a little dangerous, but I'm going to do it anyway. So here, after we've loaded, then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to display the, the logging in section, but we're going to leave the, the uh, the logged in section invisible. All right, let's see if that works. There it is. Okay, now that's invisible. And now watch this. When we when we log in, we're going to pretend that we successfully log in when we click the login link. So what we'll do there is something like this: the logging in block. The logging in div is going to be set to none. And the logged in div 
is going to be set to block. I'm going to tidy that up so it's easier for me to read. Look at that. All right. So here we're, pers we're pretending to successfully log in. Let's see if that works. I'm going to reload that page, check for errors down here. And so we've loaded, we haven't logged in yet. We're going to send the login link and pretend that we successfully logged in. And yes, the status, the message is logged in. And we say hi, because now this is like the, you know, the, um, the content that the only the user should be able to see when they log in. Well, anyone could see it. We, we, if such content, we wouldn't put it in the HTML. You would retrieve any kind of, um, what do you call it, private information, or we would have that retrieved from the server and then inserted into the web page after authentication has succeeded. So this is not a secret, but we could get a secret and stick it in there. We get it from like the database. Yeah. All right, so now, we got, we've got the outer shell of the app set up. And this is, this is the outer shell of a, of a single paged web app. Oh, one more thing I want to add to the outer shell. And that is a logout function. So single page web app. I'm showing you how to do a single page web app. So all we have is that one file that index.html. And uh, let's let's get a logout function uh, in there. So let's see. It's going to be there. Let's put it in at the. I'll put it in the top. In this div, there's going to be a logout button. This is the logout button. That's how I'm going to access it in code. It's an input of type submit. And the value is logout. Hmm. Is that one word? Logout? All right. So there's the logout button. Just check it out, see what it looks like. So we log in and now we have the logout button, which doesn't do anything, right? But let's, let's pretend like we successfully log out. So let's do some more pretending and uh, uh, do it like this. And here's the, um, oh, you know, I'm using VI, but I wanted to use Visual Studio Code. <laughs> Trying to learn how to use Visual Studio Code. It's pretty neat. And uh, so let me let me go ahead and let me do that actually because I you know learning VI may not be worth it for you. I don't know. But what I'm gonna do here is I, I got this configured. Let me show you what I did. Uh, in my configuration file for the shell, Z shell. Look at this. This is, I set an alias called code. This works in Mac and it's going to be done a little bit differently in, uh, in Linux and Windows. And then I, this is the, the, the code. This is how I do it. So I want to, oh, that's sorry, that's Electron. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is uh, Visual Studio Code.app. It's based on this open source project called Electron. It's fascinating. I was reading about it just the other day. But uh, this launches Visual Studio Code, and I am going to do that. Uh, I'm going to use that. And it takes a command line argument. I'm going to give it dot for the current folder. So basically, we're opening a folder. So Visual Studio Code has this concept of a, of a folder. You have to set a folder, make a a folder current. And here's the folder called public, and there is a file in that folder. Let's see here. It's a little hard to see. All right, I might need to, there we go. Turn the 
brightness up. <coughs> this is, uh, let's see if this helps us to work in here. I don't know about using HTML, but for um, JavaScript, if it's a pure JavaScript file, this is, this is pretty handy. In fact, that's what we could do. We could move this stuff into a JavaScript file, and I could talk about these defer attributes and what's going on with that. Uh, these are very important, this, this setting here is defer. All right, so let's, uh, in fact, let me, let me do, let me, first I'm gonna get the logout working, and then we'll uh, split the file. We'll, we'll take out the, the JavaScript and load that separately. All right, let's get the logout working. So it's uh, logout. And for logout, we don't need this. And we're gonna pretend we su successfully logged out. Pretend we successfully logged in. So to log out, what we're going to do is we're gonna say logged out in our message and we'll simply set the, uh, the logging in div to block its, uh, its display style and the, the logged in div, we're gonna set its display to none. And I gotta remember I'm in this editor. I think I'll just do what, Command S. I think that's gonna save it. I mean, I'm learning that. This is pretty cool. I think this Visual Studio Code, and look at this, you get this overview. I mean, this is slick. I still, you know, using VI, it's easier for me to use because all these years of using it. But, uh, you know, if I was a young person, I'm sure I'd be using this, something like this. And this is, uh, this is pretty cool. So anyway, I'm going to try to start using this Visual Studio Code. And this was recommended in some videos I was watching. Um, these Firebase videos. The, the Firebase has a YouTube channel with some fantastic videos, and I recommend that channel. I left a link to it in the course website, so it's, you can access that. All right, so let's see how this works. I'm going to reload that. Loading, it's loaded. We send the logout link. We, we pretend that we logged in. Now we're logged in. We say hi. Now we're going to log out, and nothing. What went wrong? We're, we're missing some, well, some logic here. And let's see, we didn't call a logout. That's the problem. So we need to, that logout, this is the logout button. We need a handler for that logout button, just like uh, down here. This, um, oh, it's down in here. This is where we add the handler for the, uh, for the login button. There we go. So we need a handler for logout. And this is going to be the A logout button. This is the logout button and the event. We're going to listen to the click event. And when the click event occurs, we're going to call logout. And when we log out, we do all this stuff that we want to do. Okay, I want to save that. Reload, and we're loading. What the heck is going on here? I wonder why it's taking so long. Waiting for local host. What is going on? Waiting for local host. What the heck? Uh, this could not load Firebase SDK. Check your internet connection. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Looking for networks. I guess I lost the uh, internet connection. All right, all right. So that's the problem with using that. Um, you know, if we if we loaded, see these these Firebase libraries. We're loading them from the content, the CDN, the Content Delivery Network. So we need an internet connection to get them. We could store them locally and just load them from there. Then we, of course, we wouldn't use this fancy notation here. 
It adds a little more complexity, more lines of code to put in the files, but it would work without an internet connection. Let's see if we're good to go here. I'll see if I got my, not yet. I'm gonna kill that, try to reload. There we go, I got the internet connection back. And, um, well, that's right, I'm not in VI anymore. I'm in Visual Code, Visual Studio Code. And here's the page. We're gonna send a login link that simulates a login. Click that thing again. It's not working. What's going on? Why is that frozen? Holy cow. Why is that frozen? Um, let me reload that thing. All right, so I send the login link, it says hi, and then I click the log out. Oh, it's working, see that? Look at that, we got it, all right. All right, so, so far we've been pretending. So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna, we're gonna stop pretending, and we're gonna really log in. Now let's figure out how to do that. I am going to take a brief moment of rest. Let's see, how do I do that? Oh, the hot key to pause the video. How does it work? Inside Visual Studio Code, I gotta go to here and I'm gonna pause this thing. It's not pausing and I don't know what's going on. Let's see, pause. No, that's the wrong thing. I wanna pause the recording. And I'm gonna pause recording. Pause recording, it's P, I was trying that thing. Oh, shift. You know, I'm thinking that actually these videos are pretty long the way that I do this work. So I think that's a good stopping point and uh, I'm just gonna stop the video. So basically what we have, just to summarize, we've got, uh, we have the shell, we have the outer shell of this uh, authentication system working as a single page web app. And uh, that's a good stopping point. This is a nice unit of work that got done. And also we started using this Visual Studio code. And uh, in the next video, what I wanna do is I'm going to get this, uh, we're gonna stop pretending, and we're gonna really do the logins. So we're gonna take it, take it from there in the next video. So I'm gonna stop this for today and upload it.